time of year. Snow coverage in parts of the Sierra looks drastically different than this time last year. The average elevation where snow turns to rain is getting higher. And as I found out, this may be a shift to a new normal. The Sierra winter attracts millions of visitors every year. While fixed elevation signs lead the way along Interstate 80, a big change has emerged in a small amount of time. Sitting at over 5,000 feet, this Nyack gas station has been a popular pit stop. Antonio Orozco, the current owner, has been shoveling snow here for over four decades. On this December day, there was no snow to clear. I see a lot of rain events, actually, where it's a wash-up all the way to the summit. You know, quite often, the earlier storms this year, for example, you know, we've gotten, you know, three, four, five inches of rain and, and a series of storms and uh, hardly any snow. His unscientific observations may be backed by science. While December failed to deliver deep powder, a new study says something bigger is happening. Mid-December, Christmas, we generally hope to not see all this shrubbery. Benjamin Hatchett, a scientist with the Desert Research Institute in Reno, made the drive to Donner Lake to look at the mountains that are lacking snow. The current visuals agree with the headline jumping out of a recent study he worked on. In the last 10 years, the average elevation where snow turns to rain has jumped dramatically. We've seen in that 10-year period, there's been a, about a 1,200-foot increase in snow levels, which you can associate with if you think about, on average, putting chains on your car around uh, Baxter or so. Now you'd be doing that around Cisco Grove. The shift from 4,500 feet to 5,700 feet surprised researchers studying snow levels. They looked at radar and weather station sites that dot the northern Sierra. While there are short-term fluctuations in snow levels, the long-term trend may be pointing up. This is totally consistent with the concerns that we have with ongoing climate change in mountain regions. The two main culprits may be found to our west, rising ocean temperatures and the development of more atmospheric river storm events, both linked to climate change. 50, 60, 100 years, if you look out to the mountains here, um, is there a chance the snow level could be the average snow level above Donner Summit? Certainly, and that I think is probably one of the largest concerns, both for people who enjoy winter recreation, uh, but even more so for water resource management. The cold winter storms are important. They blanket the Sierra with snowfall, eventually melting away into our water supply. The warmer storms may not produce any snow. In fact, they produce just rainfall, possibly too much rainfall, and that could lead to big flooding concerns. So it just sets up a perfect scenario for um, a couple big storms with 10,000 foot snow levels to rain on everything, bring in a lot of very warm, moist air and uh, very windy conditions to produce a lot of snowpack melt through rain on snow. And as you can see here with this three-story lodge, the snow was almost to the top. Uh, some of our lifts needed to be dug out. Matt Peterson of Boreal Mountain Resort recalls the legendary snow season one year ago. Boreal is one of many resorts that relies on a powerful snowmaking system to cover their runs. We've invested into a pond cooling system, and what it does is it cycles the water up through fountains, and it cycles the pond, and it gets the water down by two to three degrees colder. That cooler water gets funneled into the lines to create high-quality snow that is blasted over the mountain. The importance of snowmaking will only increase if the cold storm events become less frequent. Researchers admit the 10-year sample size is tiny on the long-term scale of climate change. The study suggests a stronger monitoring system to track future changes. For now, the current snapshot at the lower elevations may be a preview of what winters could look like down the road. Mark Tamayo, KTVU, Fox 2 News.